Research shows that it takes more than a school board to change the start time. I'm here at Woodrow Wilson High School, which starts as late as 8.45 in the morning. But starting that late could mean that teachers don't have enough time to spend at home with their families and students don't have enough time after school to hit the library. Not only can children find Japanese books in the library's reading room, but they can also be decked out in traditional Japanese garb, like this kimono here. Students at an American University might not know it, but scientific breakthroughs are happening on campus. Scientists in the biology department are researching the causes of skin cancer, and they're presenting their findings to the science community this week. Our reporter, Julia Brummel, has more. Every Chinese New Year is associated with a different animal. Each one gives clues as to what qualities lie in the year ahead. This year, the year of the water snake. Welcome to District Wire News, I'm Christina Brooks. 67 senators signed a letter today urging President Obama to do something now about the backlog of veteran benefits. Reports show 900,000 claims are pending at the Department of Veteran Affairs. Senators say the number of claims has grown by 2,000 percent in the last four years. The White House says the president is making the backlog a top priority. After years of mystery, the International Space Station says it might have discovered evidence of dark matter. It's invisible to the human eye, and it makes up about 25 percent of the universe. Scientists say the results only support one part of a complex theory of gravity, but they're optimistic. More information will be available in a few months. Thank you, Jordan. I'm joined here by Frank Fitzmaurice, Director of Technology Services at American University's School of Communication. Frank, thank you so much for talking with us today. Um, so this has gotten so big that Nielsen even has added a new zero TV household category to their surveys. Um, since people aren't watching on TV anymore, can you tell me a little bit about the trend? What's going on? Zero TV is a really interesting one. Uh, these are people who have no cable, no satellite, no other external TV connection in their households. The numbers are huge. Uh, in 2007, there were two million zero TV households. Today, there are five million. That's huge. This is if you're sitting at $10, $20 a month. They're going to stay pretty close to that because they can't really rise that much. Okay, so since those costs are low, what about the gadgets? What's the future like for the gadgets that we use to watch these programs? Well, the gadgets are interesting. Right now, um, the, the industry is trying to figure out what screens to produce programming for because people are watching on multiple screens. They're watching on televisions fewer and fewer of them. They're watching on their computers, their laptops, their uh, tablets, their telephones, whatever. Everybody's trying to figure out how to squeeze that content into that device. Mm -hmm. uh, the newest devices or the uh, portable devices like cellular phones, people are trying to figure out how do you get a signal in there. They're selling little devices called dongles to plug into your phone mm -hmm. to receive television programming there. There are 130 television stations now broadcasting to those dongles. Pretty soon they're going to come built into your telephone. Well, thank you so much, Frank, for joining us today. You're welcome. Back to you, Jordan. Doing yoga while pregnant can help prevent medical complications and prepare the body for pain during labor, based on scientific studies. You need really strong arms to take care of your toddler and your babies. <laughs> strong mamas! April is Stress Awareness Month, and recent Huffington Post and Mayo Clinic reports say that relieving stress with prenatal yoga is good for both body and baby do lots of hip opening, um, lots of expansion through the heart. As you're gaining weight in the front body, you want to release pressure in the back body. Um, I do a lot of leg strengthening exercises um, and then a lot of relaxation with breathing um, to help sort of counter what might be going on mentally. Poses in prenatal yoga are not so different from beginner's yoga and focus mainly on stretching and breathing. Beautiful. These poses help the muscles used during labor to build strength and endurance. However, there is still skepticism of its healing power. Hold the pose and move the breath. A recent New York Times report warns against the dangers of practices like yoga. Those who are not already physically fit may have a greater risk of doing a pose wrong and suffering from injury. I think it's like anything. You can go to a yoga class and not practice yoga. 
because you're not there. You're, you're not present with your body. You're, you're doing what other people are doing. You're doing what the teacher says that you need to do. You're pushing, you're sweating, you're, you're just, you're not, but you're not breathing in a way that feels authentic to your body. But prenatal yoga classes held in small groups offer more time for instructors to focus on proper form. It also provides mothers a way to bring order and peace into a very hectic time of their lives. Um, your body's changing very quickly and uh, you might not be aware of it if you're just sort of going about your day. So it's useful to kind of check in with all of those parts and how they're connected. Yoga can also connect mothers and their babies after birth with postnatal and toddler yoga. Reporting in Washington for District Wire News, I'm Christina Brooks. Howard and Anne Arundel counties in Maryland just joined Fairfax and Montgomery counties in thinking about starting school later in the day. These counties border D.C., which means the city may be next on the list to adjust its schedule. School leaders discussed the possibility of later start times at a conference for the National Association of Secondary School Principals last Friday. What we're finding is students who have adequate sleep, along with these other pieces of physical activity and good nutrition and um, regular activities in their life, are more likely to have better academic performance. Parents across the area say they have to battle with kids daily who have developed unhealthy sleeping habits. The only way that my kids were able to get eight hours of sleep was in two shifts. They would come home from school after their activities, take a nap for three or four hours, then they would wake up, do their homework, stay up late, watch TV, talk to their friends and do all those things. And never, their, their rhythms were such that they couldn't get to bed before two o'clock in the morning, one, two o'clock in the morning. Zombie-like walks to the bus aren't because of a bad attitude, but because of science. Right after puberty, hormones in the body don't allow teens to fall asleep until around 11 at night. The body also stays asleep until after 8 in the morning, even if a kid goes to bed early. Research shows that it takes more than a school board to change the start time. I'm here at Woodrow Wilson High School, which starts as late as 8.45 in the morning. But starting that late could mean that teachers don't have enough time to spend at home with their families and students don't have enough time after school to hit the library. While no set plans have been made to adjust school hours, maybe the thought of a later wake-up call might just help teens rest a little easier. Reporting from Washington for District Wire News, I'm Christina Brooks.